Here is a picture of the first petaflop uh, uh, supercomputer, which was at Los Alamos. And one of the things I found interesting for this group is that one of the applications that they're now able to do is to model the human visual cortex, which is back here, uh, mimicking a billion visual neurons and trillions of synapses, and that they think they can now do this in real time for the entire human visual cortex. So when you read Ray talking about these computers being able to simulate, or you see some of the work that I think you've heard before from IBM that's been working on the monkey brain, uh, to me it seems like, still seems like science fiction, and yet you know, I know scientifically that it's actually happening. And in fact, there are lots of drivers for this. Most of the drivers for developing supercomputers are not to figure out the brain. That's a pretty minimal side issue. It's driven by national defense, by energy, uh, controlled energy, by things like astrophysics, medicine. These are the chemistry, these are the big issues that, that convince Congress to put the money into it. But what I think Ray and, and Singularity University have focused on is that inadvertently, these are driving us to a point where actually reverse engineering the brain becomes a possibility.